and welcome. In this video, we will cover the topic of borderline ovarian cancer. One hundred years ago, Taylor first described borderline tumors as semi-malignant. In the 1970s, these tumors were classified and identified by the International Federation of Gynecology and Obstetrics and the World Health Organization. The histologic classification has allowed them to be classified and have a code. This is important for a standard definition and identification to allow comparative results. Worldwide, the borderline tumors will be less than 1% of all cases of ovarian cancer. Borderline ovarian tumors fall in the category of benign ovarian tumors. Approximately only 23% of patients will present with symptoms of abdominal pain, increasing girth or abdominal distension and abdominal mass. In other words, 77% of patients will not present with any kind of symptoms which are either specific or non-specific. The two major histological tumor subtypes are serous and mucinous, with serous being more common. Mucinous surface tumors are large, multilocular cysts with smooth surfaces. Histological examination shows that the epithelial layer is characterized by stratification of two to three layers and nuclear atypia, enlarged nuclei and mitotic figures are observed. Approximately 25% of borderline tumors have cell proliferations on the outer surface of the lesion with no evidence of growth from the inner surface. Of these, approximately 90% would develop peritoneal implants. Peritoneal implants are biopsied and show similar changes. The etiology of this borderline ovarian cancer disease is unclear. This is due to the small number of cases and the lack of randomized controlled studies. So far, we know there may be some association with oral contraceptive use, age at first pregnancy and delivery, menstrual smoking, history, family history of ovarian cancer. As far as the clinical presentation is concerned, just as for any kind of ovarian cyst, benign or malignant, there may be no symptoms or there may be symptoms of abdominal distension or and it's important that the disease is recognized by staging versus laboratory findings. The diagnosis of borderline ovarian cancer is based on surgical staging. From the available data, there is no accurate way to predict the final pathology of ovarian tumors from lab or imaging studies alone. The investigation of the patient will depend upon the underlying comorbidity. Because if the patient is diabetic or hypertensive, or she has some other disease like hypothyroidism, um, or she is overweight, or she has some history of renal disease, the, the investigations will depend upon those conditions. Cancer antigen 125 is not shown to aid in the diagnosis or in the follow-up care of the patients with borderline tumors. However, if this is tested preoperatively, it can help counsel the patient on what to expect in the operating room. And this too is only sometimes. As far as investigations are concerned, the preoperative transvaginal color Doppler ultrasonography may also be helpful. 92% of malignant neoplasms will have increased blood flow when we do a transvaginal color Doppler ultrasonography. And 90% of borderline tumors will also have an increase in the blood flow. Ultrasonography will also identify the size of the tumor and other characteristics such as whether the wall is smooth or whether there is uh, some irregularity, whether there's any solid areas within the ovarian cyst, whether there is any kind of papillary formation or septation inside the 
ovarian cyst, if the other ovary is also involved, or if there is presence of ascites. So it cannot be used as a screening tool. Computerized tomography or CT scanning should be considered preoperatively to identify possible metastasis and foci. This is only in those cases where um, malignancy is suspected or when if uh, borderline tumors are suspected. But uh, CT scanning would not be possible in all cases of ovarian cyst. But once the uh, diagnosis has been completed, then it will be helpful in following the patient up in the future. Once you have diagnosed that there is a cyst in the ovary and you have done the basic investigations for the ovarian cyst as well as for the patient, then how do you plan the management of the patient? So they, these tumors are actually very difficult to detect clinically until they are advanced in size or in stage. And if there are any features suggesting possible malignancy, then discuss the case with the gynecology oncologist and be guided by the advice of the gynecology oncologist or hand the case over to the oncologist. The treatment of borderline ovarian tumors is the surgical removal of the tumor and the performance of biopsies. However, the post-operative management protocols is far from clear. To date, no medical therapy has been shown to improve outcomes. Given the excellent prognosis for borderline ovarian tumors, hysterectomy and contralateral oophorectomy are unnecessary if the ovary appears normal and the patient wishes to preserve fertility. A hysterectomy is a reasonable option if the patient is beyond childbearing and does not desire to have any more children. Comprehensive staging should be part of every operation. Surgery is often curative for patients with confirmed stage 1 disease. If the tumor is unilateral and adjacent to normal tissue, then unilateral cystectomy is performed. However, an inspection of the capsule for signs of rupture should be performed before resection. If no abnormal adjacent tissue is present, oophorectomy or salpingo oophorectomy should be performed. If the contralateral ovary is expected, a biopsy should not be performed on the adjacent ovary because of the risk of ovarian failure if fertility becomes an issue. Exploration of the peritoneum should be extensive. Implants should be looked for and if they are present, they should be improved, removed and sent for histopathology. Staging of borderline ovarian tumors is according to the FIGO classification of ovarian cancer. It is of significant prognostic value and is performed surgically. 75% of patients with borderline tumors are diagnosed at an early FIGO stage. The staging guidelines include biopsy specimens of the pelvic peritoneum, which includes the cul-de-sac, the pelvic wall, and the, the peritoneum overlying the bladder. In addition to the pelvic peritoneum, specimens are also taken from the abdominal peritoneum. And the sites from which these biopsies are taken include the paracolic gutters, the diaphragmatic surfaces, the omentum, the intestinal serosa, the mesentery, and the retroperitoneal lymph nodes. So only the age at which the disease has been diagnosed and the presence of invasive implants is shown to influence prognosis. Various chemotherapy regimens have been used, but the evidence is insufficient to determine which therapy is indicated for borderline ovarian tumors. Given the excellent prognosis of patients with stage 1 disease and its occurrence in women of reproductive age, fertility sparing surgery is of great interest. When comprehensive staging was performed, no statistical difference was found in recurrence in confirmed stage of stage 1 disease. Thus, 
fertility sparing surgery is an acceptable option in confirmed stage 1 disease how do we know it is stage 1 disease as the presence of uh, operation or laparoscopy or or laparotomy you uh, remove the disease organ or the, the disease cyst and once that has been done you take biopsies and then you wait for the histopathology and that confirms the staging of the disease so if it is stage 1 disease then fertility sparing surgery which means to to retain the uterus for the woman and to retain the 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 contralateral ovary and the salping and the salpinges or the fallopian tube so this uh, emphasizes the need for comprehensive staging in all cases of patients who attempted pregnancy after fertility sparing operations a 50% conception rate was achieved with no fetal anomalies this area needs further research because of lack of enough evidence now staying on recurrence and survival we find that patients with stage 1 disease confirmed by comprehensive staging has a recurrence rate of approximately 15% the 5 year survival rate for such patients approaches 100% however depending upon the histologic findings the 10 year survival rate is 10 90 to 95% so in patients with stage 2 3 or 4 disease the prognosis is slightly different an increased stage is associated with a worse prognosis only age at diagnosis and the presence of invasive implants are shown to influence prognosis. Death was noted only when invasive carcinoma was noted in the recurrence. Most complications of borderline ovarian cancer are caused by the operation itself and the subsequent therapy or recurrence. So the key messages for ovarian borderline tumors is that in case an ovarian cyst is diagnosed in young women in whom fertility preservation is desirable, it is essential to investigate the patient clinically and by reliable imaging studies. When surgery is planned, the patient must have a frozen section before making a final decision. If there is any suspicion of borderline or malignancy, plan the approach carefully as you must perform a thorough examination to perform proper staging this means either a laparoscopy or if a laparotomy is being performed then a midline incision is given in the abdominal wall try your utmost to have a consultation with gynecology oncologist if you suspect ovarian cancer or if you suspect that it may be borderline if the diagnosis of a borderline tumor is made after the surgery has been performed and after the histopathology results have been received the patient and her family should have counseling for long-term follow-up. Patients can have conservative surgery and can go ahead and have children as well if they have a borderline tumor. Patients should be followed up after surgery to ensure no recurrence. And in case of recurrence, again, the patient can have conservative surgery until the patient is ready to have more definitive surgical procedure. These are the references for this uh, presentation. And uh, with this, we come to the end of the video. If you like the video, then please press the like button, subscribe, share it with your friends and colleagues, comment, and press the bell icon for, uh, for uh, getting notification of further videos. Thank you and goodbye.